Good evening and salutations my GH fans. Um, this episode... I don't know, I felt like it was somewhat pointless. There was... Maybe a very small amount, I was just gonna say one thing really. That happened in this whole episode and everything else was just... There. Like... Blah. Um... You know, let's go to the most relevant thing that happened in this whole episode and we'll just get through the fluff because <sighs> why not? Um So I was gonna sit there and say like the Scooby gang. Um you know, Trina, Jocelyn and Cam are kinda going over the fact that they didn't really get anything from the medical files that they, you know, hacked into. And so now you pretty much got Jocelyn and Cam Smith there saying that, you know, your dad's probably not alive. What makes you think your dad's alive? Yada, yada, yada. And, you know, Trina's like, I can feel it in my heart. I can feel it in my bones. You know, it, it, it seems like it's this battle between them Smith there, between Jocelyn and Cam Smith there telling her to face reality that her dad is gone. And Trina is just like, her dad is alive. Yada, yada, yada. So they go through this back and forth conversation up until the point where um, Jocelyn gets a call or gets a text from Carly telling her to get her ass to the Metro Court. So Carly earlier was talking to Jordan and, you know, Jordan informed them that, well, Jordan informed Carly that, you know, the kids are, are looking for Tiger because they believe that Tiger's alive. So that was, that's what pretty much prompted um, Carly to text Joss. So when Joss gets over to the Metro Court, you know, Carly kind of starts growing her, like, you know, what are you doing? You know, you're sitting there kind of messing in dangerous territory. Like, what's going on? What makes you sit there and think that, you know, um, Tiger's alive? And at first, you know, Joss was like, I can't tell, I made a promise, yada, yada, yada. After a while, Carly was like, yeah, I'm not having this. You need to sit there and tell her what's going on. You need to do it now. So, um, Jocelyn informs Carly that the reason why they, you know, suspected that, um, or why Trina suspects that her dad is alive is because Cyrus told her. And that's when she was like, oh, um, cause she already knew at that point, she was like, okay, Ish is about to hit the fan. I don't know who else she called. I think she, I think Carly called either Jason or Sonny. Um, I'm not too sure. But yeah, so while that's going on, Jordan meets up with, um, Tiger. Meets up with Tiger. They start talking, and pretty much Jordan is just tight. She's like, yo, listen, there's too many people that know you're alive. What is going on? And then, you know, this is when Jordan informs Tiger that, you know, Trina thinks you're alive, you know? I don't know how she thinks that, but she thinks you're alive. So who else knows that you're alive? And this is where um, Tiger informs Jordan that, Julian knows that he's alive. At this point, Jordan has just had it up to here. She's like, yo, you need to leave town now. Like, just go. Disappear. Go somewhere because you, you're, you're putting everyone at risk. You're making everyone's job a lot harder. And this is already a mess. You need to leave. Which is true, to an extent, because he has actually made a mess of things. I mean... The fact that he's just kept coming and, and walking around Port Charles knowing that he's dead, eventually somebody did see him, which was Julian, who told um, who told um, Cyrus. So, yeah, dude's walking around, and I said that before, I was like, why the hell are you still walking around Port Charles knowing that you're supposed to be dead, and what happens do you think when they really do find you? Then you'd be dead, for real, and you don't probably put your family in danger. Again, so yeah, shame on Tiger, but you know what, to be fair, whatever this 
Bia's plan about trying to, um, you know, put, um, because at one point they were trying to put, um, Cyrus back in jail, and I'm like, because that went over so well the last time, right? So that's a BS plan. Oh, we're going to sit there and, um, try to get this woman named Florence Gray and use her leverage somehow. I was like, you know, at this point... Nothing short of a bullet is actually going to sit there and stop Cyrus from actually wreaking havoc on poor Charles. So, to be honest, I am I understand where Taggart's frustration is coming in from. I really do. Um, and with that being said, let's talk about Curtis and Laura. So, they get to Vermont. They realize it's, it's like Fort Knox. And the only way you're going to get in is if you're a patient or a doctor or whatever. So they concoct this plan about, um, so they concoct this plan of using Laura as a patient and, you know, to try to get in. And at first, you know, the doctors or whatever are stonewalling them, talking about, oh, we, we, we don't see your name here, what's going on, we're going to call security. But... Um, you know, it's amazing when somebody feels, when, you know, how do I sit there and describe this? Curtis had a way of being so, like, you know, being kind of a hard ass on them and acting like he was very, like, you know, I'm a doctor and you're going to listen to me and yada, 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 like authoritarian sort of thing, that he convinced them that it was in their best interest, um... To pretty much, you know, admit Laura. Also, wasn't it there talking about, you know, she's the governor, you know, like, she's the mayor, and we're going to get the governor, and yada, yada, yada. And they did see, um, Kevin did give them a referral. So now you got Kevin wrapped up in this whole thing. Awesome. I mean, and to be fair, you know, he is Laura's wife, so, I mean, Laura's husband, so it, it just kind of makes sense. So they were able to actually get in. Laura was not there acting catatonic like she was way back um, when she was really actually catatonic. Um, so it worked. And, you know, Curtis gave her a phone in case things get too hot. Um, but told her to go in and try to find this woman to... Um, they're going to use as blackmail or something. I, I don't know. I honestly tell you the truth. I'm like, this plan doesn't seem... This plan seems just as dumb as, well, the plan of putting Cyrus behind bars. But sure, whatever. Um, all I'm saying they're saying is, you know, we, we try to get him behind bars. That didn't work. We're going to try this Florence Gray thing. And if that doesn't work, how about we just, you know, let Sonny handle it. His way. Because nothing that anyone else is doing... Seems to be working. Um, so Laura's in there, and, you know, she, well, Laura's not there talking to Curtis. Curtis leaves the room, and the doctor walks in. Now, the doctor is like, you know, I'm going to just give you something just to, you know, help you relax. And he pulls out this big-ass needle, and I'm like, okay, now things are getting real. Um... Yeah, so, yeah, he pulls out this needle, and that's when things start to get real. Because now I'm just like, alright, so how are you going to sit there and find this woman with you being all doped up? So, this should be interesting. Um, what else we got going on? So, yep, Anna and Finn, talking to Violet, um... Because, you know, Violet's convinced that there's going to be a double wedding, and, you know, Anna and Finn is like, well, that's not exactly, uh, you know, set in stone. Um, so what I listen to talking to her, to get a ring on the doorbell, is Chase and, um, Chase's dad. Dad, I can't remember his name, to be honest. I'm not going to lie. Um, but it's their dad. They come over. And, you know, they talk to Violet for a little bit, and they, they bring up um, Jackie in the wedding between Jackie and 
you know, Finn's dad. And then that's where Finn starts to get a little kind of cagey. He looks uncomfortable. Um, so they split up a little bit. You know, you got Chase, um, Chase's dad and Violet in another room. I guess they're telling their stories or whatever. Then Anderson went there kind of probing a little bit and being like, what's going on? I know you had this relationship with your dad that's very, you know, like not good because of the whole he remarried too soon. And I'll also tell you the truth, while she's talking and saying all that, it has absolutely nothing to do with that. It has everything to do with the fact that, well, they were supposed to be together, you know. Um, Jackie and Finn were supposed to be together. And we all know how that ended. So there's a lot of unresolved um, feelings and emotions. And of course he's sitting there lying straight to Anna's face talking about, yeah, you know, I just kind of had to get passes a long time ago and yada, yada, yada. So, um, when, um, Harry, I think that's his name? That's not his name. I can't remember his name. <laughs> um, Chase and his dad come back in, you know, um, Finn invites both of them, well, Finn invites, um, his dad to the wedding, which is nice because his dad was already like, I was going to crash it anyway since I told Violet I was coming. So, yeah, that really, you know, that happened and, yeah, I'm not going to lie, this episode, I felt like... Nothing major happened except for the fact that Laura was able to get into the clinic. Of course, we don't know how she's going to do now. She's all doped up. And uh, and now that Carly knows that Cyrus is on to the fact that Tiger's alive. Everything else was pretty much fluff. Yeah. Yep, that's pretty much about it. Um... I feel like tomorrow is going to be a little more exciting, to some extent. I mean, Porsche is going to go back to being Porsche with, um, Ava. And, you know what? Here's the thing about this whole Porsche and Ava thing. One minute she's sitting there on Ava's ass, okay? She's being all nasty and mean. The next minute she's sitting there talking about how they're good friends. And now in this clip, she seems like she's right back to sit there and blaming Ava for something. And, you know what, here's the thing, Ava is really being nice to, um, Portia. I remember she said something along those lines before, and I'm just sitting there just waiting. I am waiting for when Ava just had enough. When she's had enough of Portia and her attitude. Um, so, yeah, that should be interesting. Like I said, I, not really a lot that actually happened, um... I can't think of anything that majorly happened um, that was of any significance. I'm not going to lie. I did actually kind of take a look at Brock TV's um, review a little bit. Like, I didn't look at it, but, like, I looked at the time. I was like, man, that time is so short. And then I watched it. I was like, oh, yeah, well, I, I guess that actually makes sense. Um, but I guess that's just how it is with these episodes. My days... Review is also pretty short, so... But that's a whole other different reason. Um, but with that being said, I want to thank everyone for watching. It's been, the numbers have actually been a lot higher than normal, um, which is great. Tomorrow, since I'm actually off, and depending on how this whole weather thing is going to, like, really kind of, you know, happen, if it's going to be, like, really bad weather... Since I'll be home, I'll be able to actually watch it on time, and, well, worst come to worst, I'll probably sit there and try to watch it on YouTube, um, because I really don't feel like waiting to 8 o'clock to sit there and watch it on Hulu, um, but anyway, with that being said, hopefully I can actually get out my episode, my review, a lot more earlier than normal, and, um, yeah, with that being said, I'm gonna go, um, kind of a disappointing episode, I'm not gonna lie. And um, I will catch everyone in the next review. Thanks for watching.